So earlier in the week, we talked about a situation that appeared to be unfolding within Sony, and that had to do with Connie Booth, who was allegedly ousted at Sony or had left. And this was according to David Jaffe over on his YouTube account. And also he had posted up on Twitter about some information coming out. And it seemed like he got the lead on it because, well, it, it, it's been corroborated now by Sony themselves issuing a statement to Axios, not going out there and doing like a celebratory message of her leaving after being with the company for more than 30 years. No, it seemed like a, a mandatory statement that they had to issue. And well, there's a bit more to this story, according to David Jaffe, and I figured we would take a look at it because something really weird is going on at Sony, and we're going to take a look. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, and we're going to start today with this video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Backbone. The Backbone One controller makes it easy to play your PlayStation, Xbox, PC, and mobile games on the go using a thing you carry around all the time anyway, your phone. The controller fits a wide range of iOS and Android devices, stretching to fit all sizes. Installing your phone is easy with it snapping into place, giving you a comfortable grip and the controller layout you need. I've been using the Backbone for remote play on my PS5, and while streaming games has certainly come a long way in usability over the internet, using just the touchscreen is difficult and turns out to be a frustrating experience. But here, games like Spider-Man 2 play great with the physical buttons and triggers. The Backbone 1 also travels really well, shrinking down to fit easily in a bag when you're on the go. Having a pass-through USB port on the bottom means you can game and charge your phone at the same time, and having a headphone jack on the other side works to keep you immersed even in busy places. The Backbone app launches with the press of a button and greets you with a console-style UI that makes it easy to navigate your favorite games, connect with friends, record and edit gaming clips, and even discover new games to play. Go to playbackbone.com or click the link in the description below to turn your phone into a next generation system and take your games on the go. Thanks again to Backbone for sponsoring today's video. So we're going to start over here. This is with gamesindustry.biz, who does kind of go over things, summarizes a bit here, although they say it's David Jaffer. That doesn't look right. I think it's supposed to be David just Jaffe. But either way, David Jaffe, of course, uh, develop it, developed things with Sony and PlayStation like uh, God of War, Twisted Metal, and he does seem to still have ties within Sony, whether it's just friends that he's made, acquaintances, what have you. And that's why it was interesting to see him kind of just show up on Twitter, say there was massive news dropping. Turns out Connie Booth had left Sony. And that's kind of where it had ended there until he came back and said, no, no, she was actually fired from Sony. And what's odd about this whole thing is she wasn't bad at her job. She had been there, as I mentioned, more than 30 years and helped essentially get games out the door, which has come become increasingly more difficult as things have just become more and more complex in gaming. Well, she's worked with Naughty Dog, for example, with Crash Bandicoot, uh, Insomniac, with Ratchet and Clank, Infamous, and, and so on. She's credited on more than 120 games that have been released. So it's kind of odd to hear that she was fired and not necessarily that she kind of left on her own terms is that's sort of how I was envisioning this going when the information got out there. Oh, okay. Well, she's been there for so long. I mean, it's just time to retire. She's like, Hey, I'm good. I'm going to go spend the rest of my life relaxing and traveling or on a beach somewhere. Right. Yeah, makes sense. But no. And what's interesting about a lot of this stuff coming out right now again David Jaffe is the source at this point but I feel like we're gonna see more and more uh more and more places dig into this maybe trying to get some information and try to piece together the story there's one thing in here that he mentioned that caught my eye because I, I have heard this already but I had to go back and look I'm like did I hear that initially somewhere else or no this I don't think was out there yet so I'm not I can't exactly point out which one it was but I saw it and I said oh okay this is this is interesting so the the way it's kind of been portrayed here by uh, David Jaffe is that the live service stuff appears to be kind of shaking things a bit within Sony because and, and if you think about it, it makes sense I mean really Sony with Naughty Dog as an example who was working on this Last of Us multiplayer we saw what some concept art really was it Neil Druckmann had discussed this on stage I believe with Jeff Keighley at least once 
And they're used to making the cinematic, narrative-driven experience, and they're very good at it. Last of Us Part Two. I know the, the clashing online is around the plot. I think most people who have played it go, yeah, the, the gameplay, the attention to detail, the animations, the visuals, it, they're very good. They're like top-tier stuff, right? It takes them a while to make the game. It costs quite a bit of money to get it done, but at the end of the day, it's a, it's a high-quality production. But then you work in the idea of them branching off and doing a very in-depth, live service style multiplayer where maybe some of that narrative driven stuff doesn't work in that well all right so i was picturing it to be kind of like division and apparently it didn't pass the the smell test with bungie and they sent it back to the oven and well apparently they decided to put it on ice quote unquote and i guess it went back in the freezer and who knows if we'll ever see it again but that appears to be one of the things that's pointed to as maybe a reason why Connie Booth was ousted at Sony because she is responsible for just the production of these games. Again, getting things on track, getting them out the door. Uh, and I, it's, it's possible that maybe she wasn't lining up with some of the live service stuff and figuring out how to make all of that work correctly. And uh, that seems to be maybe something that had to do with her leaving or getting fired from Sony. And apparently the factions multiplayer stuff was something that's upset or frustrated developers within Naughty Dog and other places in Sony. And this isn't the first time we've heard this, by the way. Uh, Jason Schreier kind of mentioned it in passing in a recent article. And that's kind of why I think he might show up with a bit more information to piece this together. Because I do think there's something there when it comes to the live service stuff. I mean, the fact that we hear about, like, Deviation Games cutting half their staff mysteriously. Well, I think we figure what, what happened there. Maybe the contract with Sony didn't hold up. And, well, once that gets cut, your funding goes away. Eh. Well, we got to start cutting costs, and typically payroll is one of the easiest things that's more most readily available, unfortunately, for a, a company like that to cut down on. Also, Herman Holst was brought up, and it just it kind of sounds like the person that Jaffe was talking to is just not a fan of <laughs> Herman Holst at all. And uh, they kind of slipped in there that he was in favor of cutting out the Japanese studios, like uh, like Sony Japan Studio. And I, I don't necessarily think they were producing the kind of games that Sony's looking for that could potentially touch 10 million, 15 million copies sold. They're looking for that high-quality, narrative-driven experience. And I the games that were being produced there weren't for a mass audience. All right, They just, they just weren't. But I still think it's good to have them for variety's sake. And technically, Team Asobi is still there. Like, they're around. They don't really have a prominent role necessarily or one that we've seen really since the PS5 release with Astro's Playroom. Uh, so we'll see, I guess, what they come up with there. But something else I noticed as we've gone through 2023 and I looked back on it, it kind of feels like a game was missing for Sony. So if you go back, they had the PlayStation VR 2 and that had Horizon Call of the Mountain. And you figured Sony might have another VR game or two thrown in there, but no, it basically was their VR game for the year, and it was it was pretty good. I mean, it was it's in the Horizon universe. It was interesting to see it from that kind of perspective, but it didn't really do anything that made me go, okay, this this is this is it. VR is here to stay. This is this is the way we need to be playing our games from now on. You did climbing and you shot a bow, and it looked cool, but. I, I kind of moved on from it after that. I was I was I was good. Uh, and then we had MLB The Show, which they do yearly, and it is a high quality baseball game. Although I feel like I enjoyed MLB The Show more back in the PS2, PS3 days. I I spent a lot of time, funny enough, in MLB The Show 2007. So that's that's kind of my experiences. I mean, I played it on the PS3 as well, but I kind of fell out of it. And I feel like some of that had to do with the microtransactions and stuff that came into play, but either, either way, it's it's a high quality baseball game, and really, it's like the one baseball game that people are uh, are checking out. And then Spider Man Two, obviously, which fantastic game, had an absolute blast playing through it. I've completed it, and now I'm kind of going through and doing some of the side missions and different things in the world. I figure at this point, it says I'm eighty some odd percent done. I might as well go for the one hundred percent run, and I guess in turn end up with the the platinum trophy. But I say it feels like it's mi they're missing a game because I feel like one other first-party multiplayer game specifically would have been in there. I know Final Fantasy 16 is out, right? Like that, they technically 
propped up the PS5 sales with a release like that, making it a, a, a timed exclusive. It'll go to PC at some point here soon. We know that. But I, I feel like they they would have had maybe a factions, like the multiplayer. That might have come out in this like later this year in like August, maybe. And I feel like that would have made sense because otherwise... I will admit this has been a it's been a weak year for Sony in terms of their first party output, which makes me feel like something uh, just just kind of missed the mark behind the scenes. And then we hear about a lot of this live service stuff. Connie Booth apparently being fired. It does sort of add up to where there was some turmoil or ha- is some turmoil within Sony. Even going back to Sean Layton, who David Jaffe said, said was escorted out of the building it really sounds like there is a serious story to tell and we're just missing a couple of the pieces right now to fit it all together but really the thing that that i mean sticks out so much currently is spider-man 2 is out i think that's gonna do really well for this year for them and sony themselves have said that they they're projecting this to be a massive year like the biggest year ever for PlayStation. Uh, they're looking to move 25 million PlayStation 5 systems, and that would be the most we've ever seen for for any PlayStation ever, and that includes like the PS2 in a year. And they, they still have a lot of work to do, but with Spider-Man 2 rolling in the holiday season, it, it seems like they're lining up to have, yes, a big time a year. But here's the interesting thing. I look towards 2024 and Hell Divers 2. That's coming up. That's not like the I know that's not the big budget AAA style game, but they they do at least have that. Outside of Hell Divers 2 right now, though, I'm struggling to see what the future holds for PlayStation now. That's not a live service game because it's Fair Games, Marathon, and Conquered, and that's kind of it. And none of those are dated. We just we we know of them. Two of them are mostly just C- three of them are just mostly CG trailers. So it's like, okay, I, I I guess we can try to picture what these games are. But that's the biggest thing to me currently is going into 2024, there are there there's just some issues I think going on with Sony. And the way that you can kind of alleviate some of the concern is to show up with, with a, a big show, like a showcase to start off 2024, and the idea would be, okay, here is our roadmap or our plan for the second half of the PS5 generation, which sounds crazy, but technically we'll be three years in, and here pretty soon, actually, three weeks, we'll be three years in, and we have another five years to go. Let's start talking about what you can expect in the next three to four years. I, They do need to start setting themselves up for releases coming up soon, and then also some that are years in the future, and yes, some of them, I would hope, are big single player titles and not just all in completely on the live service stuff because we are watching live service games struggle just in general with third parties out there some being canceled before they even come out and by the way a game like hyenas with sega it cost them a lot of money it did Uh, so i they decided they were just going to go ahead and cancel it rather than put it out there because they deemed that it wasn't even going to work before uh, focus group testing betas what have you something told them it's not even worth attempting to recoup money on this we're cutting it out so i think we're seeing sony do that as well with bungie Uh, deviation i guess didn't make the cut last of us factions multiplayer didn't make the cut there might be others that we don't know about that also didn't make the cut so we'll we'll see when we get gameplay and especially the launch of the current live service games that we know of but really I'm curious what Sony's plans are going forward over the next several years when it comes to what's gotten them really this far in the first place. And those are those big time single player experiences. Can they deliver on those while also evening things out with these live service games that they are incredibly interested in? One thing's for sure, Sony is completely changing internally. All right, I've, I've kind of observed this and heard some of this myself, but... It does seem like the old guard is just about completely gone. And after hearing that Connie Booth is gone, that to me cements it. Jim Ryan is leaving next year, 2024. And while I know he's not the most popular person out there, he he was a constant within Sony since the original PlayStation. So it's I'm curious the direction of PlayStation going forward because that's so many people that I mean most of us have kind of observed as the brand has grown are moving on themselves. So interesting stuff as we go along here with Sony. But let me know what you guys think about this one down below. Like I said, I wanted to revisit this 
after we got more information from David Jaffe and more information corroborating what he said with Connie Booth. And, uh, whew, I mean, so do themselves. Just kind of giving a very blanket, almost cold statement about her leaving. I'm curious if we have some more information maybe coming out from people like Jason Schreier here soon. Thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll see you next time.